Okay then, so it's been a while since I've done anything for YouTube, so I just wanted to show you something I've been doing in the background. This is the loop antenna I made for VLF reception. It's made from off-the-shelf parts from B&Q, and it's, each arm is 1.2 meters in length. It was cut from a 2.4 meter piece of timber, and another piece of wood that's holding it all up was just something I'd line around from when I put my curtains up. The wire was a twin core speaker wire which came on a roll of a hundred meters and I separated the two parts to give me 200 meters of single core wire which I've wrapped around it, I turned it clockwise so I suppose the wire's going anti-clockwise around the edges there and to hold it in place well to hold the wire in place there is just green tape this is the wire going across electrical tape to keep it clamped together and at the end they're just pieces of electrical uh, trunking that I cut up from a spare piece I had and it's just glued on with no nails good old no nails that was something to hold the wire in place while I turned it and that just stopped it going everywhere because as you can imagine it's tricky getting wired to stay on the end of a piece of wood like this <clears throat> so <clears throat> the winding goes up here to a piece of that crap down there joined again to something out of another piece of electrical stuff and that's the way the coax goes in no tuning coil, don't need one, not for VLF. And that's it, that's the loop. So as they're 1.2 meters in length, I used 120 meters of wire. So I used a full 100 off the one half of the wire and then cut another 20 meters off the other piece and just soldered the two together to carry on with the loop. It's anchored in the middle there with a, a bolt and those plastic things stopping it twisting uh, are just household curtain track things. Just hold curtains up. Anyway, back in a minute. Okay, so this is the wire I bought. Twin figure eight for car and hi-fi speakers, low voltage, 100 meters wide. That's what's left of it. Loads more. I can tell you now if you're thinking about doing this with such a wire it's an absolute pain in the arse separating the two pieces and trying not to get them all tangled up you imagine a hundred meters of wire on the floor tangling around so this is what I receive now I'm not using the uh, amplifier built into the computer through the microphone socket well I am but I'm not using that as the amplifier stage. What I'm actually using is this little thing called, when it gets back in focus, a loop amplifier. It's something I picked up from from work before we had all a complete refit. It's actually to, it's what you find in shops when they behind the uh, counters and things when they amplify hearing aids so you would have microphones plugged in there and then you'd have two loop aerials at the back connected so that anybody with a, um, a hearing aid connected to T would be able to pick up your voice but when I opened it up I just found out that it's just a couple of op amps for amplifier, pre-amplifier stages for the microphones and then it's a standard amplifier output stage on the back but I drilled a hole in it and put in a BNC connector which is what the wire is here that's coming directly from the loop it's got its own volume control which is handy and if I can turn it round without it breaking this is the back end the 
going from left to right, the very left connector is connected to the positive side of the amplifier chip. The very left, uh, right, sorry, the very right connector, the black one, is connected to the negative side, and the two connectors in the middle, the black and the red one in the middle, are just internally linked together, which I thought was very, very handy, because as you can see there, there's a capacitor and a resistor in there. They form part of a passive high pass filter, which is here. The reason I built the passive high pass filter into it was because I wanted to try and cut out as much mains hum as possible, and that's denoted by that equation, which is there. I'm using a 10 ohm resistor and a 1 microfarad capacitor. Gives me a cutoff of 15.91 kilohertz, and there's a bit of a graph I've drawn. As you can see, anything from 15 kilohertz down to zero has a, a steady drop off. It attenuates the signal, and that's the circuit diagram for it. Which is fortunate for VLF because most of the action is above there anyway, above 15 kilohertz. And as you can see from the screen, and this camera hates trying to focus. If I zoom in, very nice indeed. A lot of the mains home is attenuated. There's a lot of harmonics, as you'd expect, but you can barely hear them or see them. And on the right here, there's 12 kilohertz, 14, and for the first time ever in my life, I've been able to pick up the alpha beacons, and you can probably just hear it beeping in the background. And the crackles are obviously the lightning strikes that are happening. So what else can I pick up, you might ask? Well, let's see. If I drag this down. Clearly got all the submarines. All nice and powerful. Move the filter up.
of course it wouldn't be complete without a good old British time signal. And of course the other one that's close by, DCF 77. I don't know where all that noise is coming from. It's a pretty powerful thick band of noise there in the middle. It could be that street light across the road, I don't know. these stations are supposed to be. And they're nothing further up. Nothing at all. Fairly lucky in that this sound chip on this computer's got um, where is it? 128 kilohertz sample rate, so it gives you the 96 kilohertz range that you're after. I know a lot of modern sound cards and stuff can do that now, but it's very hard to come across a sound card that lets you do it through your microphone socket. And then there's this weird one. I don't know what this particular signal is, but it sits there all the time, chirping away. Of course there's another submarine just underneath it. I don't know what this bit is. All in all, very pleased with it. The loop works. Finally being able to do what I want to do with it. And again, for the first time ever in my life, of messing about with these things, I've been able to pick up the alpha beacons. The others are there, they're just very faint. As you know, they are quite weak signals. You can just about make them out amongst all the noise. there and there and of course up there well pleased Excellent. So, hope you enjoyed. Any questions? Just ask. Whoa. Of course. You can turn all that down with the volume control if it's too loud.
right down to practically nothing. And that's it at its midway point. I don't want it too high. Oh, and the other reason for using an amplifier is that passive filters need need power to work. This wouldn't work if you tried to put those components on the loop aerial itself because they just end up shorting it out. Passive filters only work either on a preamp or a main amp stage of a, an amplifier. Takes me back to my YTS days. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much.